Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Now, flat earthers love to present observations which they claim debunk the globe, usually involving viewing objects way off beyond the horizon and they argue those objects should not be visible as much as they are on a globe based on their maths, normally because they've missed out some variables such as observer height and or refraction. So I think they think refraction is just some magic excuse to explain away things. But one problem with a lot of the observations is they can be quite tricky for people to replicate for themselves if they're trying to figure out the shape of the Earth. There's finding a suitable location where you can view objects going beyond the horizon, plus there's needing to know all the variables that are at play, and then there's knowing the maths involved in figuring out what you should expect to see. So today I want to present a much easier observation that pretty much anybody can make around sunrise or sunset that is easy to explain with the Earth being a globe, yet seemingly unfathomable if the Earth is flat. How the bottoms of aeroplanes can be lit by the sun. And for anyone who struggles with maths, this doesn't really require any. Although if you do struggle with maths, then you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. By name, by nature, it's a brilliant way to learn online, with hundreds of classes covering math, science and computing for all abilities. Each course begins with classes covering the basics for if you're new to it, or you can skip ahead to the harder classes later on if you're already familiar with the concepts. I personally love their interactive animations, I find it makes it a much easier way for me to understand the topics. I'm enjoying using it so much that at the time of me recording, I have answered questions on Brilliant for 347 days consecutively. So why not see if you'd enjoy as Brilliant as much as I have by taking a 30-day free trial just by visiting brilliant.org forward slash Dave McKeegan and Brilliant are also offering 20% off their annual subscription for the first 200 people who sign up. Now, at the start of the year, I went across the pond to New York for a few days, and on one of the evenings, we went up to the top of the Rockefeller Center for sunset. We got there about an hour before the official sunset time and stayed there taking photos of New York until long after the sun had disappeared from view. Now, on a globe, the sun disappears below our horizon because the Earth is rotating. Flat earthers argue that the sun is actually remaining at a constant altitude above a flat stationary earth, although they can't agree on what altitude the sun is. Many flat earthers have said it's around 3,000 miles, others have said it's much higher than that, but most of those aren't prepared to actually put a figure on it. But the general consensus amongst seemingly a vast majority of flat earthers is that it is much higher than aeroplanes fly and what we perceive to be sunset is actually just the sun moving away from us. Except whilst I was at the top of the Rockefeller, soon after the sun had set, so the sun itself was no longer visible, but the sky was still quite bright, I spotted about a half a dozen aeroplanes cruising in the sky between myself and where the sun had just set, and they were glistening with sunlight bouncing off them. Now, in this photo that I took, this antenna in view is the top of the H&M building. So I had a look at Flight Radar 24, and at the time that the photo was taken, there were several planes in that direction cruising just north of Baltimore, which would put them in the region of about 225 kilometers or 140 miles away. Some obviously a bit further, some a bit closer, but they were in the general vicinity of southern Pennsylvania. And the key question is, how is the light reflecting off a plane between myself and the sun that would allow me to see a reflection of the sun? High school physics covers the law of reflection, which is angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, i.e. if you shine a light at a mirror, whatever angle the light is approaching the mirror at is the angle that it will be reflected away at. So, given that the plane is much higher than me, and I'm seeing the sunlight reflecting off the underside of it, then the reflected light from the plane must be travelling downwards to reach me, meaning the incoming sunlight that's heading towards the plane must therefore be travelling upwards. That makes sense on a globe, because it's after sunset. 
the sun has moved below my local horizontal and the plane is between us and above my horizontal. But if the Earth were flat, the sun would be physically higher than the aeroplane, so direct sunlight should never be able to reach the underside of it in the first place. So I would be very interested to hear any explanations from flat earthers as to how this observation would be possible on a flat Earth. I've heard one, because I posed this observation to flat earther Gary Wybenger during a stream on STSD's channel, Initially, Gary denied that you could ever see sunlight on the bottom of a plane until I informed him that I photographed it happening, to which Gary then changed his claim to saying that it's because planes fly nose up. So where I've got a photo oh, mm. of, of the sun glistening from the bottom of a plane after sunset, mm. how's that happening? Uh, yeah, so it's just like going straight into the sun. The plane is tilted up slightly, right? Just a little bit. <laughs> What? Right? Uh, it, is the sun, is the, is, when you've got the sun on the horizon, it's prospectively, it's shining straight across, right? The plane is tilted slightly up because that's how they fly, right? Over the plane of the earth, they have a little, just a slight tilt up, which means you're going to get a slight angle to the bottom of the plane. I will admit uh, that response almost broke me. Now, commonly, yes, planes do indeed fly slightly nose up. Slightly. They don't fly perfectly level because at high cruising altitudes, the air is very thin. So to generate sufficient lift to maintain their altitude, they often fly with a slightly raised angle of attack on the wings. But we're talking about one degree here. If the plane was severely nosed up, then the people on board would all be wearing their drinks. However, even that wouldn't actually explain the observation because you can't get light to shine off the underside of an object when the object is that close to level and the light is higher than it. Easy test if you want to try this out. Find a faraway light source like a street light off in the distance. Lie yourself down on the ground. Take your phone and place it face down on the ground in front of you between you and the light source. Then. Keep the phone parallel to the ground, so it's still facing down, but begin rising it up, and you will not see a direct reflection of that faraway light in your phone's screen. You will only see light that is traveling upwards towards the screen, and the light source would therefore have to be physically lower than the screen. Plus, if it were because the plane is flying nose up, we should only ever see the reflection of the sun when the plane is flying away from us, because then pitching the nose up would be bringing the underside of the plane towards the sun. Yet, I've seen this happen with planes that are flying across my line of sight, to which the pitch of the nose would make no difference, and I've even seen it with planes flying towards me, in which case the nose up would actually be shielding the underside of the plane from the sun. The only way I could hypothetically see it happening at all on a flat Earth would involve an insane amount of upwards refraction. When I was viewing those planes in New York, they were in the region of 225 kilometers or 140 miles away from me. They were cruising around 35,000 feet or 10,600 meters. Now, based on time and date sun moon map, at the moment I took that photo, the ground position of the sun was around the Cook Islands in the South Pacific, about 11,260 kilometers or 7,000 miles away from me. Now, as I mentioned earlier, flat earthers can't unanimously agree on what height the sun is, or even agree on a ballpark figure for it. However, I have had quite a few people give me the figure of about 3,000 miles which is 4,828 kilometers above flat Earth. Now, from my vantage point, given the height of the plane and the distance that it is away from me, presuming the Earth is flat here for a moment, that would put the plane almost 2.7 degrees in the sky above horizontal from my location. So the light reflecting off the underside of the plane is traveling downwards at 2.7 degrees, meaning the light from the sun to the plane would have to be traveling upwards at 2.7 degrees. With the plane's altitude at 10.6 kilometers and the sun's altitude at 4,828 kilometers, that puts the sun 4,817 kilometers higher than the plane. From my location, the plane is 225 kilometers away and the sun is 11,260 kilometers away. So the sun is about 11,035 kilometers 
further away from the plane, which would put the sun 23 and a half degrees above the plane. So for the light to get from the sun to the underside of the plane, it would need to refract upwards. So the incoming light would need to bend by 23 and a half degrees just to get to level. It would then need to bend by a further 2.7 degrees upwards to get to the bottom of the plane, which is a total of 26.2 degrees of upwards refraction needed for the sunlight to get to the bottom of the plane on flat earth in this instance. But flat earthers cannot really use that explanation, given how they dismiss atmospheric refraction when it's used to explain observations on a globe, and globe refraction is nowhere near as severe as 26 degrees across 11,000 kilometers. That is also then presuming that after we've had this huge amount of upwards refraction to get the light to bend round to the bottom of the plane in the first place, the upwards refraction would then magically stop once it's reflected off the plane to get to us. Really, the light that's coming off the plane should be also refracting upwards, meaning that for me to see the reflection, the light coming off the plane would have to be coming off steeper than 2.7 degrees and bending upwards to reach my eye, thus meaning then the light hitting the plane must be coming in at steeper than 2.7 degrees as well, and so the whole total amount of refraction needed would be even higher. Now, I know I said you don't need maths for this, and then I've just spewed a load of maths for refraction, but really, you don't need it because it's not possible to get a direct reflection off the bottom of an object if the light source is higher than it. And the great thing is, like I said at the beginning, pretty much anybody can see this happen. With so many planes flying these days, pretty much everybody lives within line of sight of high-flying passenger planes. So just watch out for them either just before sunrise or just after sunset. And if the plane is flying in the right path so that it goes between your location and the sun, you can often catch the sun glistening off it. Obviously, provided there's no clouds or anything blocking the light path. I've caught this happening quite a few times recently. In this video I took, the plane is flying across me, perpendicular to my line of sight to the sun. You can see the plane is initially dark because I'm looking at the shaded side of it, but then the underside of the front begins to glow. That is the sun's direct reflection, which then slowly moves towards the rear of the plane as it continues flying, and then within a few seconds it's moved right to the back and then disappeared. So the reflections only occur on the plane in a very narrow window relative to me and the sun. If you catch the plane soon after sunrise or before sunset, then the light doesn't reflect off the underside and instead it winds up lighting up the side of the plane, and not too long before sunrise or after sunset, the plane doesn't get lit up at all. Now, it's worth clarifying here, I'm not talking about seeing general light coming off the bottom of the plane during the day. There's always light reflecting off the plane. If there wasn't, we wouldn't be able to see them, which is what happens at night time. But during the day, that general light is just light that's reflecting off the earth up to the plane. I am talking specifically about direct sunlight, which you can differentiate because it's much brighter, harsher, and it leaves a clearly defined shadow on the plane. Or when you see that glowing blob appear, that is a straight reflection of the sun itself. Now, I can imagine some potential flat earther explanations. One might go down the road that the plane is cylindrical, so the light is shining against a curved surface. So just in case, we'll address that one. Firstly, curved surfaces would not really change anything. For the light to approach from above and still continue downwards, the surface would need to be heavily angled so that the sunlight is almost just glancing off the plane, which you wouldn't get from the underside in level flight. That would be more coming from the sides of the plane, so the underneath would still not be getting any direct sunlight. I mean, based on the figures we've already gone through, the sun should be at a higher angle to the plane than the plane is to me, so the light, if anything, would be glancing off the top of the plane. There is probably the other flat earth favorite explanation of perspective. 
that because we see the sun set near the horizon, that must therefore mean that the light is coming in from under the plane, even though the sun itself isn't. But I will be amazed if any of them can actually show a practical demonstration that has a light above an object that doesn't involve long distances across Earth, which would be them presuming that that long distance is actually flat. Perhaps a clearer way of thinking of this is if you have light A that is shining light against a reflective surface, wherever that reflected light lands, you place a second light, we'll call light B, and shine it back at the reflective surface, the light from light B will go back to light A. Therefore, that must mean that if the Earth is flat, we can somehow shine a light towards the bottom of an aeroplane and have it reflect up into the sky to the sun. But just to drive a final nail into this, like I said, this is a fairly easy observation to make. Not only have I personally captured numerous examples of this, but I happened upon a video from a channel called X-Spot Aviation that does a lot of plane spotting videos. And one of theirs in particular I saw, I think absolutely destroys Flat Earth. It's a video titled High Altitude Plane Spotting. It's numerous clips of planes all flying at high altitude, and it's done with a very impressive camera setup, because the views of the planes are extremely clear and the tracking is very smooth. And the video also includes all of the specifics for each flight as well, such as flight number, route, altitude, speed, etc. And there are two clips in particular that I would love to see Flat Earthers demonstrate. Both of them involving Emirates Airbus A380s flying between Dubai and London, both stated to be at 40,000 feet and both captured at what looks more like sunset rather than sunrise. Both of them show exactly what I've been describing here with the clear reflection of the sun gradually moving across the underside of the left wing. However, both of these also show some interesting characteristics. Firstly is the middle of the fuselage underside is clearly lit by direct sunlight. This area of the A380 is not a curved fuselage section like the rest of the plane, it's where the undercarriage goes and it has a flat bottom to it. So that tackles any potential claims about curved surfaces being the cause. Secondly is that both planes are at 40,000 feet, so they're at a steady cruising altitude and they're viewed for quite a long time and there's no visible changes to their direction. So it's safe to say they're not banking or pitching, the plane is in steady level flight. Crucially though, is that not only do both videos show the undersides of the left wings being brightly lit, whilst the right wings are completely shaded, so the light is coming from the left side below the plane at a shallow angle, but we can also see clear shadows being cast on the underside of the wings. Those shadows are being cast by the engines, which are hanging below the wings. So the sunlight must be hitting the plane from below in order to be casting shadows of the engines upwards onto the underside of the wing. And to be casting clearly defined shadows like that must be direct from the light source. It can't be bouncing off the earth and reflecting up because that would evenly light the whole underside of the plane. Like I said, that's all easily explained on a globe because at that particular point, for the observer, the sun is below their local horizontal with the plane above them, so therefore the plane has direct line of sight to the underside of the plane. Explanation for flat Earth? I guess we'll have to wait and see. That's going to wrap it up for today. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and then hopefully... We'll see you in the next video.